Hi guys, how's it going? Today I'll be talking about Call of Duty Black Ops 4, specifically the multiplayer mode, which I've had the pleasure of playing for a good amount of time. I'm playing the game on my PC, maxed out in its full glory. Take a look at the video description if you want to know more details on my computer. I'm a huge Call of Duty fan, and my first Call of Duty game was Call of Duty Finest Hour, which came out back in 2003. Many titles later and we're here with Call of Duty Black Ops 4, the 15th main entry in the series, 4th in the Black Ops universe, and this time unique to the franchise is the absence of single player story mode. Instead, for a full price game we are given 3 main modes. A deeper zombies experience, with 3 maps available at launch, 4 if you bought the battle pass, Blackout, which is the battle royale mode, and of course, multiplayer mode. This review is only covering the multiplayer mode. I'm going to be talking about some of the notable changes they've made to the game and how it affects gameplay. What's good, what's bad, and just my general thoughts on the state of the multiplayer. One of the biggest changes to multiplayer is the fact that healing is now done manually. In previous Call of Duty titles, your health would regenerate automatically back to full. Not here. Players must be active in both offense and defense. This added step to healing is a welcome one in my opinion. Players have to be more active and more involved than just running and gunning. First, let's talk about specialists. So specialists are back and they bring with them all of their unique abilities from the Ruins Grapple Hook to the Torx Offensive Barricade to more support-oriented abilities. For example, the Seraph's Tack Deploy. This allows users to place a beacon for teammates to spawn at specific locations. There are many old faces here and some new ones to join the ranks but they all feel unique and give the game much needed depth and player choice. Some specialist abilities are definitely more favorable to use than others. I found Battery's Grenade Launcher, Prophet's Tempest, and Torx Barricade extremely useful and rewarding to use, if not a little unfair. Ruin specialist ability is by far the most annoying. It's an easy way to clear a room or capture point and it definitely sucks when all one player has to do is grapple to a point and use this ability. Limiting the use of these abilities with a cooldown that can be sped up by gathering points balances out their destructive power. Rather than choose one of two abilities before going into a match like in Black Ops 3, each specialist now always has a prime ability and equipment. The equipment, such as the Seeker Shock Mine or Mesh Mine, can be used quite frequently in a match. It can also be swapped out with secondary equipment like a throwing axe or frags. The main ability is always constant. This is what you see at the bottom center of the screen and it takes much longer for the gauge to fill. You can fill this gauge quicker by obtaining more points, either from kills, assists, or objectives. The specialists bring a unique class based focus on the multiplayer combat, and I welcome the minor tweaks in how they play. Some people would prefer to have no specialists at all, but I think this is what makes Black Ops unique. Next, I want to talk about Create a Class. A staple of Call of Duty is the deep and diverse level of customization. It amazes me how much time and polish they put into Create a Class. There are so many different options to choose from, different loadouts to mix and match to really tailor your playstyle. Not many games allow this level of freedom and customization, and I'm glad that not much has changed here. Create a class follows a 10 point system where everything is an attachment. Every perk, equipment, and weapon takes one point. Players are limited to only 10 options per loadout, and this keeps the game balanced for the most part. Another big change is having equipment such as the frag grenade or throwing axe locked to the equipment slot. This is shared with the specialist equipment. If you want one of these items in your loadout, you have to sacrifice the specialist equipment. It also has a cooldown, which is nice to detract spammers. No more martyrdom or random grenades from the sky. You'll find extensive choice of visual customization, which adds value to using one weapon more than the other. If you want that specific skin on your weapon, you have to earn it. I think other games need to take a look at Call of Duty in terms of the level of freedom and choice to pick out how they want to play. Now let's talk about score streaks. What is Call of Duty without score streaks? In Black Ops 4, I would say it's actually a bit tougher to get enough points for score streaks. Initially, it was hard enough just getting a UAV. I like the fact that you can pretty much eliminate any score streak that lingers on the map. The obvious exception would be the Hellstorm, but things like UAVs, counter UAVs, helicopters, even the gunship can be taken down. If one whole team of five players equipped the Hellion as soon as the score streak arrives, it would be dead on arrival. And taking down these score streaks adds points towards your own score streak, so it's strongly encouraged to do it. Let's have a look at the maps. 
So there are 14 maps to play on and I'm a little mixed about this. Yes, it's a good amount of maps at launch and the maps themselves are really varied. You have snow-capped mountains, beaches, small villas with rooms to traverse through. But the moment I saw maps like Firing Range and Jungle, I was like, wait, I've played these before, haven't I? Which Black Ops am I playing again? It's just a shame that they had to resort to rehashing previous maps. Maps that are great on their own right, but still not original maps, unfortunately. So 10 maps original while the other four are remastered versions. Nuketown, a fan favorite, will be coming later in November. Now I want to talk about weapon balance. Excellent gunplay is another staple of Call of Duty, and Treyarch definitely gets it right here. The weapons feel impactful and truthful to any real-life counterpart they may resemble. There's enough variety in each weapon category to choose from. You have assault rifles, submachine guns, tactical rifles, light machine guns, and snipers. Each weapon has its own level, and with each progressive level, you'll unlock a specific attachment, such as a grip or an extended mag to enhance the weapon's combat effectiveness. There are also weapon modifiers called operator mods. Operator mods are only attachable to certain weapons and can only be accessed while using the operator mod wildcard. These mods change the way certain weapons behave and downright alter the gun entirely. To balance this out though, the operator mod takes up to three slots, which limits the rest of your loadout. One particular operator mod that comes to mind is the SOG 9mm dual wield. It definitely needs some rebalancing in my opinion. You're bound to come across someone with this at some point and it's pretty annoying. So my final thoughts. In the end, I think Treyarch has created another fun, exciting, and addicting multiplayer experience that few game developers even come close to. The level of polish, customization, and content is welcome, especially when games of today are coming with less and less content at launch. There are some minor personal grips that I've had with the game. Terrible, terrible matchmaking on both ends, the reduction of the standard 6v6 to 5v5 in some game modes, and questionable user interface choices that make menus tedious to navigate. None of those issues, however, detract from the overall experience and I think Treyarch has created a gem here. Hopefully they continue to add more content to keep players like myself coming back for more. Well guys, I hope you liked this video. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on Black Ops 4 multiplayer. Hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Take it easy, my friends. First,